Now I'm going to be tying this fly here. This is a Welsh fly. This is called the Howell Gwent. Now it's a very popular fly in Wales obviously. This is well, it's popular in many parts of the UK and Ireland. And I'm sure if you tie it it'll be you'll catch fish where you are anywhere in the world. Now the slight variant in this fly I'm gonna put a small tag on it using the Glow Bright Floss number twelve, which is as you can see a green. The way I do this is just to simply wind the floss on, remove the waste piece, just come round the bend slightly. And before you come back up, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of super glue. You can use varnish, whatever you like. You don't want too much. So you just form a small tag with it. This will protect it and obviously make it last much longer. Take the floss up out of the way and then I'm going to change over to a uni thread. This is AO in black. And we start the eye so I've got a layer of thread down. Come over the floss and the way down and remove the floss and the waste piece of the thread and carry on down until you reach the tag which is there. Now for the body, you can use dyed black ostrich herald. Now I've got a very fine ostrich herald here. There's a smaller feather. I've got three or four fibres here. Just want to keep it quite small and then catch it in with the tips as you can see and wind up. Now you could rib it with a fine wire, you could use whatever you have. Or you could do, do this, basically what I'm doing is putting a thin layer of varnish, uh, super glue, sorry. You could use varnish if you want. And then wind up. You may lose one or two, that's the reason why I like to use more than one. And if you use the finer, you can get this finer body if you want it. And then zigzag across. Trying it in, you can break that off, you don't need it. You get a nice shape if you use that, you see. And you just you can leave it for a minute or two, just to allow the super glue to dry. Because if you touch it, if you put too much of the super glue on, you'll just basically stick the fibres to the side of the hook, and you don't want that. The wing. Now we're ready to tie in our wing. Now our wing is, as you can see, this is crow. Now we need a right and a, life, uh, right and a left side. Now these are secondary feathers. Now you can use either side, short side or long, it's up to yourself. I pref well, it doesn't matter really, but I mean, this this is the easiest side to use. You get a nice, neat wing if you do. And what I'm going to do is cut a section from a, a left side and the right side. So that when you tie them in, they come in and meet. More natural look anyway. It's your side. You can see, just kind of slightly get the wing, look at the wing length that I want, which is there. Do the same on the other side, just check the width. At this point you can always move things around if you're not happy. So we tied a couple of fibres too long, so I'm removing them. And line up the tips. Tips is there, check the length. And the width of the wing has to be the same. Don't want it one side thicker than the other. Give me a quick look. Looks okay. And then what I'm going to do is get the length, fold the wing. It's got a nice roof shape. Now I like to crease it first, so I'll do it like a pinching loop couple of times, just check the wing at this point, now they're done. It's just to crease it slightly up, now to get it to sit, I feel it's much easier to get it to sit better once you've done that. Just offer it, get the length, you've still got the mark there, just bring it a wee bit lower. Take your time, again allow the thread to come through your fingers, pinch and loop, so you can get it lower. You don't always get it right the first time. I find it easier if you decrease it first and then do it. You see the wing's slightly lower, that's a bit better, it's okay on this side. Length is just 
So again, it's up to yourself. Uh, in this case, it's short hook, but you want it slightly by, you want it by. Trim away the waist. Now, I had waxed the thread before I started, so there was plenty of grip there. Now, even more waxed at that point. Hackle, very important the hackle. This is the neck feather from a ring neck pheasant. And you see that nice, it's got a lovely colour, it's got a nice shine off it. Now, as you tie these in by the tip, take away the, what you don't need. I'll use my hackle pliers, which are a small pair, just so that I can basically catch the tip of these feathers. Stems are quite thick on them, they're not the easiest to wind on. I'm going to trim it, so I've got a wee area to tie it in. Just offer it to the, my side with the front of the feather, the good side facing towards the eye. And then, now you're not going to get many turns out of this, you don't want too many, you don't want it too long. We'll just have a wee look, we'll wind it on, we can always go back. Just one turn in front of the other. A wee quick look at this point here. So it's a couple of turns. Come in through the fibres. Just take your time. Make sure it's secure. Trim away the waist. And then I can take these out. The thread been waxed, you've got plenty of grip. Turn away the waist. Form a nice head with the thread. Keeping the thread tight and then what finish. And what I'm going to do here is just to get the way the feather to sit, or the fibres to sit a wee bit better. Just going to use the trusty hair dryer. This will Basically take the twists out, the fibres that you put into the hackle. You will twist the fibres round. This is what it would look like once it's been fished. Once you start to fish your fly, it'll get into this nice shape. You see that, how it sits? Now that's basically how I tie the fly. And then all you have to do is a quarter two of varnish all the way around. It's a great wee pattern. I know a lot of guys out there just can't take it off their cast because it does so well. Just making sure the eye is clean. And there we go. And that's the how it went. <laughs>